So I've been doing some thinking. I get a lot of time to do that. Being a truck driver, it's a lot of time to think. And, uh, you know, listen to audio books, all that stuff, you know. And I do a lot of reading in general, but mostly just thinking. So I got to thinking about this virus. COVID-19, if you want to hear the word or to help the search engine stuff. And I, I, got, I got to thinking about uh, these masks and how water droplets and particles work. Now, a mask, these surgical masks are effective to 600 nanometers. So basically, the way I see it is this is a screen where everything to make it through the screen has to be or be become 600 nanometers or smaller. That there are a bunch of fibers in the way. And to me, that seems like it would increase the pressure, air pressure, as you're breathing in and out through those uh, passageways or openings uh, between the fibers. So there would actually be pr probably quite a bit of air pressure. Now, a water, draw, uh, a water uh, atom is something along the lines of like 0.25 or 0.27 or something like that nanometers. Uh, a lot smaller. Uh, the coronavirus, COVID-19, is usually between 100 and 120 nanometers. But it is polymorphic and can get through and can change shape. Uh, shape and ergo its size a little bit in a sense uh, down to, you know, in some places, I guess they say it's uh, down to 20 nanometers. That's really small. Now, if you don't know what a nanometer is, maybe you don't even know what a micron is. Uh, yeah, what a micron is. And a, na and a nanometer uh, is, there's a thousand nanometers in a micron. So like we're talking, you can't see these particles. But it seems to me, that water gets through it as long as the droplets are smaller than 600 nanometers, which is invisible to the eye. So that would be in the form of humidity. And it seems to me like that's still plenty big enough for uh, viruses, the largest virus uh, particle known is around 500 nanometers so you're still talking big enough to fit through those passageways i don't know if that would be small enough to uh ride on a, a water droplet but i, I believe the hundreds nanometers covid 19s would be there should be an experiment done to understand if that's the case i know that it's not airborne in the sense of it can just fly through the air but if it has a host particle water it can be airborne <clears throat> and I know at face value the masks it seems like it makes sense you know you spray it with something that's going to stop it slows the flow of, of fluids through it that's what we were taught in wilderness uh, wilderness uh, first aid is that that's actually one reason why we didn't include those masks in our kit because all they really did was slow flow of fluids and they really were only designed for bloodborne pathogens because blood's a much thicker fluid. And in fact, those things are tested with uh, vegetable oil. And they tested with how long it takes for X amount of vegetable oil to flow through them. So it seems to me that as you're breathing out, the moisture in your breath, even if it's not small as 600 nanometers, is going to push it through that hole and force the larger droplets to become smaller, more airborne droplets as you're breathing through it both ways in and out and it seems to me that let's say you have uh let's say you're not infected but some virus has landed on the outside of your mask and you would then be shoving moisture out there for it to ride on and i feel like it's almost immediately aerosol i brought this up to a few medical professionals and they can't actually explain to me why i'm wrong which makes sense because uh, the honest ones that I've talked to say they don't know. Uh, my sister, there's a couple doctors I went on. Um, I'm not going to quote them because I'm not trying to cause a debate or anything. But I did, uh, I, I went on to a COVID uh, 
resource page on Facebook and asked a couple people there. And some of them just say the CDC says this, so do it. Or WHO says this, so do it, you know. We know better than you. But they can't explain to me why I'm wrong. And the honest ones have said, well, we don't know. We're not taught about how, how the buoyant, buoyancy and atmospheric conditions of 600 nanometer part, uh, droplets of water work. We're not taught that. So that makes sense that they wouldn't know anything about that. Seems to me like maybe a, a good meteorologist would be a good would be a good person to talk to about this. I, I do believe that it's possible that um, now when you're breathing out, if you're infected or even if it's just on the mask, and you're breathing it out. If you're in a dry climate, that would actually make it it would go airborne in the form of humidity immediately. But then it would also evaporate very quickly. Maybe that explains why Nevada has only got 50 something deaths at this point. They're riding through this. They're skating through it. Maybe it's evaporating and maybe it, it needs water as a medium, it needs moisture as a medium. Doesn't uh, Viruses and bacteria all don't really live long without water. So that could be part of it. But it seems to me that if you're breathing in, though, there's nothing evaporating that moisture. So if there's any uh, any particles, it's still going to make it through the mask. And in fact, if you're wearing that mask every day, there's a reason why dental hygienists have to change that mask out every patient, every hour, is because moisture builds up and it actually offers a medium for bacteria to travel through even faster than if it were dry. So you're actually... Every water particle you're inhaling, it would be 600 nanometers or smaller, riding with virus on. It seems to me like it would go deeper into your lung. And this is a respiratory disease. I'm posting this because I want to know exactly what the right thing to do is. Wear a mask or not wear a mask, but it seems to me that actually wearing a mask would be less beneficial for your health in regards to this unless i'm wrong about the buoyancy of these particles but it seems to me that basically put uh, shoving moisture through that kind of a small uh opening is probably similar to hitting the mist button on your hose and it increases the hang time again maybe it actually is aiding killing some of the virus in dry climates but if you live in florida or texas or oklahoma or someplace like that it's food for thought. Uh, it, it, I'm not, as of right now, I bring the mask. Uh, I got a very, very large wild rag. If you don't know what a wild rag is, it's a silk bandana. It's like a 48 inch one. Very large. I could quadruple it up. And, uh, and uh, I'm bringing it for compliance. I tend to carry it anyways. Because I work with dust and things like that sometimes. And uh, just as a wilderness person, I've always liked them anyways. I can use them to keep cool, keep the sun off me. There's a lot of uses for them, and this is one of them. So this is fine. But as of right now, I'm not going to wear it everywhere I go. Because unless I get an actual, like, I don't want anyone to be like, oh, I've got the college education or, or from a point of authority, like I know what I'm talking about. Well, if you know what you're talking about, you need to be able to explain to me why I'm wrong. Seems to me like it'd be a good idea to do some experiments involving radioactive, uh, slightly radioactive charged carbon atoms in water droplets to see and, and it through these kinds of masks and see how they travel and even see how they travel into the body. I think someone should do the experiment. I think we need to know. I think it's very important because we could be making things a lot worse if I'm right. I know I'm not a super smart guy, but I can't get anybody to tell me why I'm wrong. And they need to be able to explain to me why I'm wrong because the, the, the consequences of if I'm right are really bad. So... Yeah, just putting that out there is uh, something to think about. Have a good day, everybody.